Hi, in this video we're going to talk about class design and abstract classes. So when we're designing classes in Java, it's important to spend time and think about how the classes relate to each other and what the characteristics are of each class. What's the state? What's the behavior? What's shared? And it's important to spend time out of the code actually writing out what each class should be and how the classes relate. This is one of the big challenges as you do more Java programming. Because as the programs get more complicated, you know, you have this task which is to think much more about the program design. You'll need to use pieces of paper, you need to draw out your class hierarchy. You'll need to really think about, you know, how the classes relate. So we're going to talk about two class hierarchies in this video. The first one is the shapes class hierarchy, modified a bit from earlier. So you can see you have a shape, and then a rectangle and an ellipse uh, inherit from shape, and then a square extends rectangle and circle extends ellipse. And then we also have the dessert hierarchy. At the top we have a dessert and then pie, cake, and cookie inherit from dessert and then apple pie is a specific type of pie. Pound cake and cheesecake extend cake and chocolate chip cookie extends cookie. So when you design a set of classes, sometimes the classes at the top are more abstract. These abstract classes can't be instantiated. However, inheriting subclasses may all share properties or be related, even if the parent class is abstract. And so when you make a class abstract, you say public abstract class shape. So that abstract keyword is what actually tells you that the class is abstract. And within abstract classes, you can have abstract methods. And an abstract method can appear in an abstract class, and then the abstract class just has a header. The implementation must be done by the subclass. So as an example, pub, public abstract double get area. Uh, here it won't make sense to define the implementation of get area until we know what type of shape it is. So the method is abstract. So we're going to explore these classes in the editor. Okay, so here we have our shapes program. We have a class called shapes tester, uh, which is a console program. So we can run that and see what it does. And now we'll really dive in and explore all the classes. So at the top, let's start with shape. So shape is an abstract class. We say public abstract class shape. Uh, a shape has a name. Um, and so in the constructor, we set up the name. And then we provide uh, getter and setter methods for the name. And then you can see we have an abstract method called get area. And it doesn't make sense for a shape to, you know, for in this class to implement get area because we actually don't know what that formula is. Only the subclasses will know, and that's why it's abstract. So let's now take a look at rectangle. We've modified rectangle a bit from earlier because now uh, rectangle extends shape. A rectangle is a shape. And so in our constructor, you'll see we'll first call the uh, super constructor of shape to set the name and then we'll set the width and height. And you can see now <clears throat> in this example we also have multiple constructors. So if you call the constructor um, you can call a constructor with a name or without the name and if you call one um, with without the name as you can see here on 13 to 16 we're actually calling uh, our alternate constructor using the this keyword. So this line right here line 15, actually goes and calls this constructor, passing in rectangle as the first parameter. So you can see now here we've implemented get area, uh, and the area of a rectangle is the width times the height. So this is the rectangle class. And then you can see square, modified a little bit from earlier, square extends rectangle. And so um, you, know, you can see how that one works. So now let's look at ellipse. And so an ellipse is a shape. Uh, ellipse has a semi-major axis and a semi-minor axis, and we can see that we have two constructors here, one that takes a name and one that doesn't take a name, and you know that calls the other constructor using the, this keyword. And then we have getter methods for the semi-major axis and semi-minor axis, and then we um, have a method to get the area. And so this is the area formula for an ellipse, uh, pi times semi-minor axis times semi-major axis. Now let's look at circle. And so we can see that a circle, actually a circle is really an ellipse where the semi-major and semi-minor axis are the same. And so we can create a circle with just the radius. And so to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the super constructor here, which is the constructor of ellipse. Um, we'll say super, pass in the name circle. And then 
uh, radius is both the semi and semi, semi major and semi minor. And we'll save radius explicitly as an instance variable. And so you see here, this, this actually didn't define a new get area method because the get area for ellipse will already work. So now if you go back into shapes tester, you can see what's actually going on. So a couple things here, you, when you make a new uh, object, because a rectangle is a shape, we can actually do something like this, where on the left hand side we say shape rectangle equals new rectangle. So as long as um, this type on the left, the left hand type is a little more general, then that's okay. That's okay because a rectangle is a shape, right? So, but shape can't be on the right hand side here because shape is abstract. So we're saying shape rectangle equals um, new rectangle 10 by 20. And you can see here that we're calling, um, you know, the get name and get area method. And it's calling the proper get area method for each shape. So you see, we make a rectangle, we make another rectangle, we try making a circle, ellipse, and a square. And then we go through them, you'll see it actually prints out the proper uh, name and area. So there's a lot here, but what you'll want to do is you'll want to go into Shape Tester and you'll want to make more, uh, more shapes. Try and make a circle, try and make an ellipse, try and play around, try and call the different methods. Um, you know, you can go and you should look at every file. You should see, you know, how the different files work um, and explore. So this is one example, the shape hierarchy. Now here we also have one for desserts. So um, dessert tester is our entry point and it calls a bunch of methods on our different, um, our different classes. We make a cheesecake, print out the name and recipe. We make a pound cake. We make an apple pie. We call some methods on the pie to eat a slice. And then we make a cookie. So those are, those are the, what we do here. We can see what, we, what happens when we run it. And you can see that we get some information about the different desserts. So let's go look into the different classes. You can see a dessert has an int for calories and a string for name. Uh, we can make a new dessert and there are some get getter methods for those variables. Um, and let's look at pi. So pi extends dessert. Uh, we can go look at apple pie. Apple pie extends pi and adds some new instance variables including the crust type, the number of slices. It adds a eat slice uh, method which uh, decrements number of slices and a method to figure out if we still have slices left. Um, we can look at cake. Cake extends dessert. And then there's a few different types of cakes. You can see the pound cake um, extends cake, but also includes a recipe, which it uh, initializes in the constructor. We have cheesecake, which similarly has its own recipe. We have cookie. Cookie extends dessert. And similarly, chocolate chip cookie, which extends cookie, has its own variable for a number of chocolate chips. And then you can see a few extra methods to add chocolate chips or get the number of chocolate chips. So in this example, uh, we have a bunch of classes that are related and you should run this program and try and go into desserttester.java and call some of these methods. Uh, try making new pie, new apple pie, new chocolate chip cookie. But this is an example that you can play around with.